So, cold sorceries. They are really cool, no pun intended. They deal incredible amounts of damage with only a bit of setup, and can melt bosses really quickly. The only problem is that all the spells are acquired quite late in the game, so getting the first spell will require quite a bit of ingenuity and a ton of trial and error. Exactly my kind of problem to tackle. The rules for the run are, as always, I cannot deal damage with anything besides the cold sorceries, no spirit summoning, all the spells in the category have to be collected, if possible. Oh, and I will also attempt Malenia this time around, so the YouTube comment section can hopefully relax this time. With all of that said, let's kick some ice. Alright, the first task at the start of this run, after we pick up our boy Torrent, is collecting both of the Dexus medallions, located at both Fort Haif and Fort Faroth. With this, we immediately head over to Altus Plateau, we skip everything else for now. We make our way all the way to the Auriza's Hero's Tomb location, right next to the capital. On our way over there, we grab the raw meat dumplings, which are going to be essential for the next step. Once we arrive at our desired destination, we grab the grace in Auriza's side tomb, so we can go and complete our next task. Now, before we are able to use cold magic, we are going to have to rely upon black magic for now. Now, what is black magic? We go over to this exact location right next to the grace, and here we are gonna have to perform the dark art known as a mega zip. If you watched my previous spell only run, you should be quite familiar with the zip glitch. Though for this skip to work, we are going to have to use the zip glitch but on steroids, hence a mega zip. It's basically just a zip glitch with an additional input command after the initial setup. So after lowering the graphics to as low as possible, we get to work. It took a couple of hours, but eventually this happens. Now, if you're paying attention, you should realize that we are in the range of a stake of America in the Forbidden Lands. And now you can see why we bother picking up the raw meat dumplings. The dumplings will poison us after we consume one, and will slowly tick off our health. And after we die, we choose to get transported to the stake of America. And voila, we are in the Forbidden Lands. But we are not done yet. We head up to the road lift. Since we do not possess the road medallion, we are gonna have to now perform a force quit wrong warp to finally get to our desired destination. The mountaintops of the giants. Thankfully, after all of that fiasco, the spell we want is located immediately at the beginning of the area, in the Zamor ruins. The spell is called Zamor Ice Storm. Who would have thought? Having finally gotten access to our first spell, we can start creating our build and tackling all of the major bosses in the game. Zamor Ice Storm has an intelligence requirement of 36, so before we go and tackle any of the major bosses, we are gonna have to level up significantly. So we hop on over to Lene's Rise in Kaelid to pay a visit to our boy, the Knight's Cavalry. I'm sure you know what's coming next. Enemy felled indeed. With him down, we get just enough runes to level up our intelligence to 36. I'm gonna take that as a good sign. The spell itself is kinda cool. It's gonna be tricky though to figure out how to use the spell against the upcoming bosses. Now we should be ready to pick up our first shard of the Elden Ring. But before we do that, we gotta face the first major boss. Foul tarnished. Can we do this? That's actually- oh my- I mean, I, I expected Frostbite to do a lot of damage. That's some hefty damage, man. We can actually set this up, and then Margaret will just walk into it like an idiot, but the problem is he's not actually operating. Yeah, there we go. Get your baited. We are basically on Neil at this point. And he should be dead. GG, Margaret. Get destroyed by Frostbite. That was actually pretty nice. This is a, this is a very interesting spell to play around with. Uh, will we have enough damage for this guy? That's actually a question here. I know we're gonna have a lot more openings for this guy, though. Godric, my boy. Bam! You have your storm and I have mine. I mean, the amount of damage we do with Frostbite is insane. Who thought this was a good idea? You're fighting the wrong Elden Lord. I'm the Ice Lord. Fire against ice. We all know who wins. Okay, dead. Bam! Good fight. Croatian Ice Storm. Yeah, we have wins in Croatia that you don't even know about. Trust me. With Godric's defeat, we acquire our first shard of the Elden Ring. Now, not gonna lie, I'm already kind of bored with the spell, so before we continue, let's go do a quick detour to grab a couple more cold sorceries. Most of the cold sorceries in the game are locked behind the insidious bastard known as Selovis, who is situated in Caria Manor. Since we do plan to complete Rani's questline anyways, it would be a good thing to get him out of the way as soon as possible. On our way to the manor, we grab a few things to make the upcoming boss fights easier. 
First, we stop by the Academy of Raya Lucaria. Here, just before the Red Wolf, we pick up the Graven School Talisman, which boosts sorcery damage by 4%. Second, we backtrack back to Kaelin. Here, in the Ionian Swamp, we go and collect the Meteorite Staff, which is by far the best sorcery staff for lower levels. Thirdly, we ride to the northeast of Lyurnia, in the direction of the Minor Earth Tree. Upon our arrival, we go and challenge the Earth Tree Avatar at this location. His only difficulty stems from the fact that he can one-shot us because we haven't been able to level our vigor sufficiently yet. So figuring out his attack patterns is the key in order to defeat him. Thankfully, he has quite a limited amount of attacks he can dish out at us. So eventually, we figure him out and cut down this annoying tree. He drops us the Magic Shrouding Crack Tear, which boosts sorcery damage by a whopping 20% for a full 3 minutes. Fourthly, we go to the Lux Ruins on the Aldous Plateau and challenge our favorite girl, Gilika. What can I say about her? She really can't handle the cold, and goes down relatively shortly without too much effort on my part. In the chest behind her rests the Ritual Sword Talisman, which boosts all damage output by 10%, as long as our health is at maximum capacity. Lastly, just outside of the Carrier Manor, we go and collect the Intelligence Knot Crystal Tear, which boosts our intelligence stat by 10 for 3 minutes. Our build is slowly starting to take shape. The only thing standing between us and the cherry on top, which is our new spells, is Royal Knight Loretta. And wow, she was one of the more tougher challenges in this run. She jumps around a bunch, making it very hard to land hits on her with this slow ass spell. But eventually, I figured out that if you charge Zamor Ice Storm, it increases its area of effect by quite a lot, making it much more likely to deal some serious damage to Loretta. Still, she was no cupcake, let me tell you. But persistence prevails as always in these games, and the Royal Knight eventually goes down. With her down, we go up to the tower and talk to our waifu Rani, and her entourage, of course. After taking care of that, we go on over to the insidious bastard Celux. Now, he won't sell you his stash immediately, he will give you a potion and ask you to give it to someone. I choose the fastest route and just let our boy Gideon take care of that, so I can get right to the spells. He has two cold sorceries available in his stash, Ice Crack and Freezing Mist. The former of the two is probably the second best spell in the category. The most powerful spell we are going to require a bit later on in this run. The other spell that I wanted to grab is called Terra Magica, which is locked behind the Crystallian duo boss fight in the caverns under Raya Lucaria. This boss fight honestly is super easy, so we immediately take it down and collect our prize at the top of the tower. This is by far the most powerful buff for sorceries, providing us with a damage boost of 35% as long as we stay in the zone that it creates. With our newly found power assembled, we are now ready to face our second shard bearer. Unsurprisingly, it's gonna have to be Redan, as Renala is almost immune to magic damage, so we don't really have much of a choice here. Alright, let's beat his ass. I saw a lot of damage actually. As long as we can frostbite him, I don't really have anything to complain with. Bro, Zamor Ice Storm fucking rocks, man. Bro, down, leave me in pieces. Got absolutely demolished. I mean, I do a lot of damage to him, but he also does a lot of damage to me. Just continue to spam, Toto. Run behind him, hit his ass. BAM! Frostbitten! GG, Radan! GG, Radan! <laughs> Frost OP, boys! <laughs> Good fight! Before we make our way to the capital, we do want to finish up some of Rani's and Selvis' questline, as they will both provide us with some really nice buffs for our build. First of all, we go to the Academy to take care of the Red Wolf of Radagon. With Ice Crag, the fight essentially becomes very easy, even with him bouncing around the entire debate parlor. After taking care of him, we go up the rafters to grab Radagon's icon, which will come quite in handy once we grab the last spell. Now we want to drop down into Nokron, having the path being opened after defeating Radan. Here we collect the Finger Slayer Blade, which is a key item in progressing Rani's questline. A mild warning though, if you need Selovis alive, don't give this item to Rani yet. Having said that, since we need Selovis for one more thing, after visiting Selvis' sex dungeon and doing a bunch of chores for him, honestly, I hate his questline, he will award us with the Magic Scorpion Charm, which boosts our magic damage by a good 12%. Only now do we give Rani the Finger Slayer Blade to advance her questline, since Selvis' usefulness is finally over. After she receives the item, she will make herself scarce, but it will open the path into the tower right next to her tower. And at the top of the new tower, for lore reasons, we will find her clothing. Interesting. All joking aside, her hat does have a nice effect on it, which boosts all cold sorceries damage by 10%. With us now being buffed to the goddamn gills, taking on the bosses in the capital should be as easy as cake. Uh, let's actually go behind this guy and just start 
spamming the ever loving shit out of him. Bam! Bam! Oh yeah, this is gonna be piss easy. Bro, spells in this game sometimes are broken. And goodbye. Totally, absolutely obliterated. God damn it, this spell is pretty powerful. That wasn't even a boss fight, that was a fart in the wind. 666. Oh my god. Also, the ice crack is quite cheap as well. We cast the storm! And he doesn't walk into it, <laughs> of course. This actually might be a strategy. We can actually just cast this. And bosses usually attack you once you cast something. So this might be a strategy we use later on. GG! Absolute annihilation. Spells are just broken. <laughs> what killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! Bro, Morgoth used on no chance here. What can you even do? Oh shit, he can, he can, he can definitely throw the spear. <laughs> Morgoth, you're not making this easy. Come on. That's what you wanted to do. There we go. Finally. BAM! Bro, Morgoth, you are really no chance for this. Oh my god, what is this damage output? Jesus Christ. Why did Miyazaki think that allowing spellcasters to spam their attacks was a good idea? Alright, let's finish this off. Having finally received the rolled medallion, even though we technically don't even need it anymore, we are off onto the next part of our journey for destruction. Alright, I've just now realized that we still have the basic meteorite staff, so it's about time we actually grab the staff that we want to use during the rest of the run. We stroll on over to Celia, the town of Sorcery. The staff we want to pick up is locked behind a pretty simple boss overall, but instead of actually fighting the boss, let me actually show you a more fun way to get the staff. We hop up onto the top part of the gate in this place. Here we want to do some tricky parkour shenanigans to get up onto the statue and then jump in the crevice in the tower to the left. Now we want to jump right and turn to land on top of the entire complex. From here we want to just jump down carefully until we land inside of the boss arena. We basically just performed an AI freeze on the boss by not activating the fog gate, giving us an easy kill and access to Lusat's staff, which is gonna be our main staff for the rest of the run. To upgrade it, we go around the entire map to collect the Somersmithing stones needed and then upgrade the staff to plus 6 for the time being. At this point, it will be high time to finish up Rani's questline and collect the final sorcery. So we go and hop into the teleporter, collect our miniature waifu Rani and challenge Blythe to a fight. No joke, Blythe was super tough to beat with the setup. He seems to have a lot of magic resistance together with being completely immune to frostbite. He also deals a ton of damage considering that I haven't leveled up my faith a whole bunch. But we can just take this slowly and shoot him down with ice cracks after he does his signature plunging attack. It doesn't take too long and eventually Blythe goes down. Our waifu Rani congratulates us and now we are quite close to our final destination. We run through the worst poison swamp in the entire Soul series until we encounter Astel, natural born of the void. We might as well flex on the bosses while we can, right? The only thing I don't really like about Astel is his const constant running away. It's like you're a goddamn alien from outer space and you run away from a puny male stripper, like what the hell Astel? You're lucky you can't get frostbitten, you ass. Okay, whew, that was actually a little bit close. My god. We literally killed him at the last possible opportunity because we don't have any flasks left over. <laughs> After Astel goes down, we just need to get into the elevator and... Oh yeah, I never killed Renala to pick up the ring in her boss arena. Meaning that we cannot access the Moonlight Plateau. Well, fuck it, let's go and do it now then. She might have 80% magic resistance, but we are so strong at this point it's certainly possible to defeat her, right? Well, before we chow down, let's go back to the mountaintops of the giants and collect the Summer Smithing Stone 7 and the Summer Smithing Stone 8, so we can further upgrade our staff. See, I won't take my chances with Renala here, so we backtrack back to Caleb to grab the plus 9 Summer Smithing Stone, and now we are going to make our way to the consecrated snowfields. After collecting the necessary items to access the secret path to the Halic Tree, we ride through the snowy wasteland, grab a grace for later, and challenge Anastasia to a duel. After she goes down, we are rewarded with the Ancient Somber Smithing Stone, meaning that we can now finally upgrade our staff to the fullest. Enough lollygagging, time to finally face Renala. We cast this, and we prepare. 
And of course, we completely miss a hit. Oh my god. She's actually very resistant to magic, but what is this damage? She has 80% magic resistance. What? Makes no sense. This is an insane amount of them. Like, what the hell? Renala is supposed to be very resistant to this type of attack. This is a magic sorcerer face-off. But unfortunately, she has more sorceries. Okay, go back to Terra Magica and just spam this. I need to clutch this out, guys. Bro! Ah! Oh my god. Renala down, boys. Not gonna lie, that was surprisingly easy. I guess that goes to show you the power of stacking damage on top of damage in this game. It really becomes overkill after a while, so even magic resistant bosses provide almost no resistance at all. Well, we still need to fight one more highly magic resistant enemy before we are allowed to celebrate. Not only is it magic resistant, but it's also one of the more annoying dragon fights. And I'm of course talking about the glintstone dragon Adula. And oh boy, does she have some utter bullshit attacks. Thankfully, the dragon AI is only AI in name alone. It might be artificial, but it's definitely not intelligent. I basically stood on top of the stairs, beating it over and over with ice crack and taking cover whenever necessary. It took a while, but inevitably the glintstone dragon goes down. And we receive the most powerful cold sorcery, Adula's Moonblade, the carrion slicer on steroids. We are now gonna properly showcase the spell in the upcoming boss gauntlet. I'm not gonna lie to you here. From here on out, the challenge of the run is mostly over. But definitely do stick around if you wanna see some awesome boss kills. Cause these spells will melt them like butter. Despite the fact that they do cold damage. But before that, we of course have to marry our wife Urani. And with that final act, let's kick some more ice. And there we go. Adula's Moonblade is so FP consuming. It does so much damage, but it consumes so much FP at the same time. And now we're gonna do what? How did that happen? Hit the face! How? Why is that so little damage? What is on? What is going on today? Hit the face. Hit the crotch. Bye bye, fire giant. Fire giant down, boys. I'll take it. What is this damage? What is this damage? Bro, we don't need more buffs. <laughs> what is this? This makes zero sense to me. Who thought this was a good idea? What can you even do? <laughs> when cold sorceries run over you. Jesus. That was actually way too easy. <laughs> oh my god. Bro, this is not okay. How? Oh, there is the frostbite. I was wondering where the frostbite is gonna come. And that's all she wrote, baby. This might be all I wrote. <laughs> Perfect finish! What? <laughs> it's not. No! God damn it, Malikev! I'm dead. Malikev, you badass. I'm dead. But he's alive? <laughs> he's no longer alive. <laughs> Good fight, Malikev. Bye bye, Gideon. Yeah, we, we don't need a safe fight. Let's continue. This time with a little bit less case of the dead. Here we can hit. Here's a fallout to this. This can be punished, but it's very, very dangerous. There is actually this punish window, though. That works! That works, he's dead. GG! <laughs> well played, Horalu, well played. Even with all this power, she's still an absolute menace. We are far enough away. I'm gonna play it safe here. I want to defeat her in an honorable way, but she's not being honorable to me. I'm not gonna be honorable to her. This is why I hate her. <laughs> Look at this disrespect from her. Like, what do you even do? This is, like, this is like a bad UFC fight. You know when two people don't want to engage? Thank you. Glintstone Ice Crack Podovin! Dude, 
GG! Oh my god, I hate this fight so much. He's not gonna pet it at the beginning. He is. He's gonna pet it at the beginning. The hell, Radu? The hell was that, Radu? Heal. Should be dead though here. If he doesn't teleport, he's dead. Okay, let's heal here, let's heal that, let's get ready for the Elven Beast. Double hits. Much better. Much better, yeah, we should have done that already. Oh, not the other bullshit attack! Bro. GG! GG. Bit sloppy, but still good. Elden Ring with only cold sorceries. Done.